Okay, sweet. So we're recording here. Okay, welcome everyone uh, to another Edge meeting. Um, as you can tell, it's a very different background than my uh, my me sitting on the floor and with my uh, with the couch in the back. But um, I've changed some scenery today. I'm I'm at Rogi's house, and for those who are curious and for those who are wondering, same last name. Yes, we are brothers. Um, Rogi lives in a different city than I do. He lives in Milton, so. Um, I don't see him as, as often as I'd like to, but uh, today he invited me over and he's sitting over there. He's giving me his back. Yeah. But um, um, Abuna, you, have you served with Rogi? I, I feel it's, it's weird for me to like, it's weird for me to, to, to introduce my brother. I don't but, know. To yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to, to, that Rogi is joining us. You could do it. It's, 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 it's amazing. Thank you, Rogi, for making the time. Yeah, a nice flavor of the Sharkawi. Uh. <laughs> the better flavor. The, uh, better. the Sharkawi flavor, yes. <laughs> the, the, approved, the approved flavor, that's what it is. <laughs> no, both are amazing flavors. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ragi, for, uh, for joining us, of course. Yeah, uh, Ragi's root is, 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 is Mississauga. Yeah, but now, right. now, now, he is, now he is a big, wonderful leaf in the, in the city of Milton, the lover of Christ. <laughs> so thank you for joining, uh, Ragi. Thank you, really appreciate it. I hope your family is doing, are doing great. So uh, wonderful topic as well about the liturgy, especially it's good that this is coming with the opening of the church. Otherwise, that's going to be a, a nice teaser. <laughs> That's uh, that's true, and actually, that's that's what uh, that's what inspired me to to talk about it. Um, as as the churches were opening, and as we were coming back to liturgies, um, I, if I'll be honest, I mean, this is a talk that I gave. I think the last time I gave it was maybe over a decade ago, and I think it was probably in Edge or what was before Edge. I think it was just the grad group. I think at, at the time, so it's been at least a decade. Um, I've had to circle back and find the uh, find the presentation and. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's a great blessing to be here and it's, it's a refresher for me and it's certainly, uh, and you know, I think the topic is relevant to all of us. Um, having not been to church in three months and uh, not attending a liturgy for three months, I think it's taught us, um, it's taught us how to appreciate what many of us may have taken for granted. And as we're coming back to church and as we're coming back to attend liturgies, um, it, I think it's even, I'm, I'm hoping tonight at least to share with you some of the symbolism uh, and meanings behind what we do in the liturgy and why Abuna does what he does um, to help us appreciate even more the meanings behind the liturgy and the messages that are behind. So um, certainly I'll do my best uh, to try and go. It's, very, it's a very, very rich topic. I'll try to do as much of an overview as I can. And then, of course, any questions at the end, <clears throat> Abuna will be happy to, to entertain those and answer them. So, you know, you're, you're the one who prepared the topic. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. I just, I, I feel, and had to share it, you know, like, you know, be... for sure. All pleasure. However, it's it's, it's always <laughs> yes. nice to uh, to uh, to refresh <clears throat> the meaning of the of, of the liturgy and the practices. So, uh, I, I personally look forward to learning from this year. Thank you, Abun. Okay, so let me uh, let me pull up my screen. Great. You guys can see it, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, what we're doing? What I'm I've I've, I've decided to split this. Um, I typically have given this talk. I think three sessions um, <clears throat> just because of time though I'll try to I'll try to do it over two sessions um, so today what we'll focus on is the what we call the offertory um, so the offering of the lamb as and, and the procession of the lamb and um, the liturgy of the word otherwise known as the liturgy of the catechumens um, and then next week God willing we can talk through the liturgy of the faithful um, if, if you're trying to think of where does the liturgy of the faithful start it starts with the creed. So essentially, those who believe can recite the creed, um, and therefore that's where the liturgy of faith, the faithful starts. Anything prior um, is called um, either the offertory or the, uh, the offering of the lamb or the liturgy of the word um, or liturgy of the catechumens. 
Oh, and, and, and as I mentioned, I've, the last time I presented this was over a decade ago. So you will see these pictures and, and they will show the age. Uh, I think today it's, um, I think it's just pictures of Abuna and Marius for those of you who are, who are in Mississauga. Um, so, and, but I don't have pictures of Abuna Potros. So I, I, I tried to scour those and I couldn't find them. So they might be in the next, next set of slides, but you'll, you'll, uh, you'll appreciate how, how long ago these pictures were taken. <clears throat> okay, so to start off, when, when Abuna comes in, and um, uh, this is after the matins, so we're not, today we're not talking about the raising of incense, the matins or vespers, so going right into the, um, right into the, uh, the offertory. Um, when Abuna starts, he sets up the altar. Um, and the altar, the setting of the altar is, is, is symbolic of when the, when the disciples had gone ahead of the Passover to prepare for the Passover. Um, this reminds us of, um, of the disciples going to prepare the upper room. So in, in such manner, Abuna goes and starts doing the same thing to prepare, if you'd like, the upper room or preparing for, um, uh, for the Eucharist. Um, usually, the the set um, of of the, the all the vessels, so the paten and the and and the chalice and all, all things we'll talk about those. Uh, usually, they're, they're all tied together. Um, so those of you who are uh, are deacons who are served, who are served in the sanctuary, um, everything is is wrapped. Everything has its own uh, casing. It's um, obviously nobody can touch it. Um, so everything is it's cased together. Abuna will go and make the sign of the cross. Um, usually there's it's three knots. Everything's tied up. So he says, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And then there's two other knots, glory and honor, honor and glory. And he takes off, um, basically removes all the utensils, all the, sorry, all the vessels from their coverings. And he will start preparing uh, and putting everything in its place. <clears throat> Does anyone have any idea how many uh, veils? So there's a lot of veils um, uh, on the altar. Does anyone have any clue how many there are in total? You can take a wild guess. Any takers? There are 12 in total. So it reminds us again of the, of, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the Eucharist, in the first Eucharist, last, in the Last Supper um, of the disciples. And so there were 12, there's 12 veils in total um, that, are, that are used as part of the preparation. <clears throat> okay, so once it's all said, so just to level set what things are and where, what things are used. So um, the chalice, and the spoon is called the mastir. So the chalice and the, and the mastir, um, they are placed in what we call the throne. So that's the, that's the box, if you'd like, that's in the middle of the altar, that's called the throne. Um, and under the, under the, the, the pat, so the paten is called, is, it's the plate that Abuna places the urbana in. Now, that paten, under it. Oh, it's going in, it's gone. I thought I heard it's gone. Sorry, was, was someone trying to ask a question? No, I, I think this was a mic that was uh, was opened by a mistake here. I, I okay, think. okay, no problem. Um, so, um, so there are, there's the, the pattern, okay, and uh, there's a there's there's two small veils and we'll talk about those two small veils uh, which will which we'll use but let me start off with the large covering so there's a very large covering um, that gets placed under everything okay there, it's I know you can see it very well in the picture here but there's a very large covering that goes on top of the altar um, and the pattern is placed on top of it and this cup this large covering fits right under the uh, the throne. So Abuna will kind of slightly lift up the throne, fit this large covering under it. Um, and the reason he does that is actually nothing, there's nothing spiritual about it. In fact, it's more of a practical reason. Um, because Abuna uh, during, during the liturgy will be, will be uh, worshiping every so often, 
and he'll be kneeling down. So in an effort to prevent anything from falling, so if, if, this, if this veil is, is not under the, the throne, it might inadvertently slip and fall and everything will fall. So, you know, the pattern and, and, and the body. So to keep it secure, he fits it under the throne. So there's, no, there's really no spiritual uh, meaning behind it other than really just practical. And then he has this large covering that is uh, usually red. Uh, now, in fact, it could be any color. Um, there is nothing, um, there's nothing that dictates which color, but we typically use red and obviously red uh, resembling the, the blood of Christ uh, as a reminder. Um, but let me ask you, why do you think that veil is there? Any, uh, any idea or any, any thoughts on why this veil is being used? Again, it's not a spiritual. Uh, it's not. Should spiritual. I should I answer? No, no. You're gonna answer at the end when when people ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the reason the reason Abuna uses a colored veil doesn't matter again what the color is is because when during uh, during the fraction or during the distribution of the uh, mysteries, um, if there are any well, crumbs, but the, the real terminology is jewels. So if, if there's any uh, remnants of, 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 the, of the body that may have left the pattern, if, you're, if, you're, if you try to see it against a white veil, it's very, very difficult. So what we do is we put a colored veil so that you're able to see the contrast. If there is a piece of jewel, a piece of the, of, of the body that is left, You'll be able to, Abuna will be able to see it very easily, uh, or one of the deacons who's assisting him in, in the service. Um, and, and that way we, we, we can um, safely say that nothing gets, um, nothing gets wasted or, um, or lost. And then lastly, he has the dome. The dome goes on top of the, uh, of the pattern uh, where the bread, uh, or the, or the, or which will become the body. Um, and that dome on the top has uh, a, a small cross um, or also symbolizing the star that appeared at the birth of Christ. So that small cross as well reminds us of the birth of Christ. And he places, he has got two small veils that he places on top. Um, he'll use one of them to wipe the lamb um, and the other to cover it during the procession around the altar, which we'll get to in the next minute. Okay, so he'll take those two small, small veils. One he'll use to, to, uh, to, uh, for uh, for wiping the lamb, and he'll put that in his sleeve, um, and then the other um, to wrap to wrap the uh, the orbano with. <clears throat> after the altar is is um, is prepared, and every after everything is in place, now they will pray the psalms. Um, Abuna and the deacons will pray the psalms. Why do we pray the psalms? The psalms. Um, contain all the prophecies of the coming of Christ and his birth, his suffering, his resurrection, um, his salvation. Um, and so we, we pray the Psalms and the Psalms are typically prayed in accordance to the timing of when the liturgy is prayed. So um, you'll notice, for example, if you attend during Great Lent, um, we're praying the Psalms for, from, you know, include the ninth hour, and sometimes in the and in, in monasteries even even more because their their liturgies are further in the day or later in the day. So typically, the psalms that are prayed are in accordance with the timing of the liturgy. And like we said, the psalms are a fulfillment um, of the prophecies of the incarnation of Christ and His salvation. After this, Abuna will start the selection of the lamb. Now, he will go inside, um, he will go back inside the sanctuary, he will wash his hands, he will wash his hands three times, and uh, this is not meant as a sanitary activity, um, uh, as, as people sometimes think, uh, that is not the intention of it. The intention of it um, is, a sim is to symbolize a purification of the heart and through repentance. So he will, he will wash his hands, he will recite uh, uh, verses from the three Psalms, from Psalm 50 and Psalm 25, as he's washing his hands. 
<clears throat> and he'll also he'll also now um, after he recites he will then uh, take that small veil that 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 we talked about in the previous slide or two slides ago he will put it in his left sleeve because he'll need that later uh, when after he selects it. and then the so typically it's either the most senior priest um, or the most senior deacon uh, will come and present the the offering and the reason it is the most senior in the service is is out of honor and out of respect to the lamb so if there's another if there's another priest who's praying with abuna you will always you will always see that the that other priest is the one presenting or bringing the uh, bringing the offering Abuna will examine the wine, um, and the reason we examine the wine, and he'll 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 smell and he'll give to um, either uh, the priest or the deacon um, in front of him, as well as to the deacons on the side to smell as well. And the reason we do that is because we want to be sure that the wine did not turn vinegary. Um, so if it, if if it is good, um, and some people don't know this, even uh, some deacons don't know this, you know, some people will you know give a nod. Uh, or a thumbs up uh, no we're supposed to answer and say good and pure so if it is if it is um if it is acceptable if it smells okay you're supposed to say good and pure and as deacons and as servants we have a responsibility if we if we feel that it's off if we feel that something's not right we we we, we tell abuna at that point um it needs to be swapped <clears throat> so the selection of the lamb uh, uh, Abuna will pray, he'll pray and he'll ask God that the Lord chooses a lamb without blemish. And obviously in this process, he's looking for um, the, the perfect lamb, the perfect Orbono. Um, and when we say the perfect Orbono, like you don't want anything with cracks, you don't want anything with a bend, um, you want the perfect circle. And again, you're, you're, you're asking for perfection in the same way that our Lord is perfect. Now, he does an interesting thing. You will notice that when he comes to start, he will kind of cross his hands like this. And he will, he will start picking the, um, picking the Orbonas and to start the selection process. Now, obviously, he does this. Yes, you can see a cross, but this actually, uh, this, this, um, uh, this, this action itself has its origin, or, or it, it actually happened the same kind of the same action happened in Genesis chapter forty-eight, verse eight. <clears throat> um, in Genesis chapter forty-eight, this is the story of when Jacob was close to his death. Um, and he called Joseph um, and asked him to, to you know, bring me your sons, uh, Manasseh and Ephraim, so I can bless them. Um, and we can, we can read it together if you want, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go through the story. So, so Joseph brings Manasseh and brings Ephraim to Jacob and asks him, he says, go ahead and bless them. Now, when he brought them both, he put um, Manasseh, who's the older, he, he put him on, on Jacob's right side and he put Ephraim on his left. So he did that because with his right hand, with, with Jacob's right hand, he wanted him to bless the oldest son. But instead, instead of doing this, Jacob did this. And, and actually that upset Joseph. Like, so he, he started praying and blessing and he was giving the, you know, blessing the older, uh, sorry, blessing the younger son rather than the older or giving him the, the giving him the birthright blessing rather than the, um, uh, rather than the, uh, the, uh, the younger. And that upset Joseph. And he said, no, 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 father, you, you, you're, 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 you're putting your hand on the, on the younger and not the older. And Jacob answered him in the story and says, yes, I know that. Um, you know, the, the older son will also be blessed, but the younger will have a bigger blessing or a greater blessing. And, 
when you think about this, it's it's um, it's a it's a it's a reminder of how Christ. So in this case, the the lesser became the greater. Um, and and so Christ Himself, who was great, who was who is the Lord of Lords, He became least amongst us. He became the servant um, in order to save in order to save the world, in order to grant salvation to us. So in the same manner, Abuna does the same, same action that Jacob did when he blessed Joseph's sons, and he, 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 he points towards the blessing on the youngest or the least. Um, and, in, and in this fashion, Abuna then will start in the same manner, and then he will pick up, and he will start, um, and he will start the selection process. Now, usually in the basket, there's an odd number because you want an odd or you want a unique or bono, so it's always an odd number. Um, typically, three, five, or seven, as you can see on the slide. So three is a reminder of the Trinity, um, in that the Trinity works together towards the salvation of the world. Um, five represents the the different types of the. Uh, offerings in the Old Testament. So there were five different types of offerings in the Old Testament. There was the burnt offering, the sin offering, iniquity, peace, and the bread offering. And so those are five different types. So it's a reminder of those um, which pointed to the, or to the sacrifice of Christ. Um, and then there was the, also the seven types of, of sacrifices, again, which was sheep, cow, goats, pigeon, turtle doves, um, and in some cases, two birds were to, to, for, for, uh, for, for the lepers. And so those seven, again, those were Old Testament sacrifices uh, that were used. And again, the, the idea here is they all point to all these, all these Old Testament sacrifices and arch, are archetypes. They point to the, um, to the sacrifice of, of Christ. Sorry, Aki's asking me to get out. So I will, I will do that. Hmm. Okay. Now when Abuna's doing this as well, he is he is always keeping the he's always keeping the better the better one in his right hand. Okay. And the reason he does that is he again out of honor. So he's always keeping the better Orbana in his right hand. And so if there's a situation where he has one that's better than the other, if the, the one um, the one in his left hand, for example, is, is better than his right hand. He will switch them over, always keeping the better one on top and the lesser one on the bottom when he switches, okay? And again, that's out of honor. Um, sorry, we've got the sync running here, so just give us a second. All right. Um, and then what happens next? So also within the, within the Urbana, there are three... Uh, there are five holes in total in, in, in the lamb, two on the left, three on the right, and that's, again, a reminder of the wounds of Christ uh, on the cross. So you have the th uh, crown of thorns, you have the, the two nails, um, you have the nail in, in the feet, and then you have the nail on the side. And so the, when you're looking at the Urbana, uh, when Abuna is looking at the Urbana and holding it, he's always trying to keep the three holes to the right, Again, a reminder of the spear um, that pierced uh, the right side of Christ. Once he's chosen, um, once he's chosen the lamb, he uh, he will then touch the rest of the breads that are in the basket, and it's it's a symbol. It's symbolizing that all the sacrifices of the Old Testament, um, they all pointed to the sacrifice of. Okay, so he's point. He's almost like asking, showing that they all pointed to the sacrifice. Now he he will uh, he will just temporarily place the orbana in his left hand. He will remove the veil that was in his sleeve, and he will wipe down the orbana. And that wiping again is to ensure that any imperfections, any, um, you know, anything that's left in terms of any any excess flour, anything like that, that that is all cleaned, cleaned and it is offered, um, it is indeed a perfect, uh, a perfect lamb. And then he takes the decanter from, from the deacon. He will take some of the wine. 
he will make the sign of the cross on the chosen bread and then once more on the chosen breads again uh, re-emphasizing that the uh, all the uh, all the sacrifices of the old testament pointed to the ultimate sacrifice of christ once he's inside the sanctuary then he will start um, what we call baptizing the lamb so he, the uh, the deacon will give him some some water in his in his either in his fingers or in his palm um, and then he will baptize or you know, wash or baptize the lamb, just like Christ himself was baptized. And then he will then kneel down and he will offer a prayer um, on behalf of the congregation. Um, and he prays for the whole, that he, he, he prays not just for the congregation, he prays for the congregation, the church, and the whole world, asking this lamb who carries the sins of the world. And if you remember, even in the Old Testament, and you see the picture on the bottom right, um, when Abuna is kneeling and placing his hand on the offering, if you remember in the Old Testament, when there was an offering, those who, um, you know, those who, were, who, who came to the, uh, uh, to the tabernacle to offer their sacrifices, they would place their hands on the sacrifice um, almost as a... Um, Sym symbolic transfer of the sin to the uh, to the sacrifice and if you think about this when abuna prays the absolution for us um when 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 we have our confession he places he places his hand uh on our heads um and then he will and then he will then in the same manner he's taking he's taking this offering he's taking those sins placing them on um on the sacrifice that is christ um, and so it's reminding us of, again, that Christ himself bears the sins of the world, um, or who, this, uh, who carries the sins of the world, and he prays, he prays on our behalf. Now, using the same veil, um, he will then wrap the lamb, okay? He will, he will wrap the lamb, and he will, take his, he will take the cross and put the cross and almost tilts it, bends it slightly. Um, and he will say, uh, he, will, he will stand in front of the congregation um, with, with, again, with the, with, the, uh, with the lamb or with the offering covered in the veil and the cross tilted and then they will go around the altar once. The cross is tilted, reminding us of Christ carrying the cross. Okay, so Christ carrying the cross, and then Abuna and the deacons, they go around the altar once, reminding us or declaring that Christ died for the entire world once. Right, so Christ died for the whole world once, and he does it with the cross tilted, again, to remind us of, of, of the events of the crucifixion. It's also a reminder when he wraps the he wraps the when he's wrapping the uh, the orbana as well. It's reminding us when he raises when he's raised um, the uh, uh, the lamb uh, be, uh, before the congregation. It reminds us also of when 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 he was offered as a as a baby when he was offered to the altar, um, and Simeon himself said, "No, now you are letting your servant depart in peace." Um, it's the same idea where he lifted him up. So that covering and that lifting reminds us of Simeon, um, and then and then the the cross tilted and going around the altar once reminds us of Christ dying for the entire world once. He brings the water and the wine together, and he starts making the signs of the cross, and and they start the prayer uh, of of the offering of the lamb. He'll then take the lamb. He'll put it in the pat in the paten. Now, under that, by the way, there's a small veil as well. So if you can imagine, so there's a plate, or the pattern rather, and then inside the pattern, there's a veil. It's, it's a circular veil, actually, typically. And then he places the, uh, the lamb on top of it, okay? And this is going to be important, and you'll know why in a couple of slides. So there's the pattern or the plate, then a veil, then the lamb, okay? He'll take the wine. He'll pour it into the uh, into the into the chalice, followed by water, and that reminds us again that when Christ was pierced, 
uh, on his when they pierced his side, um, water and uh, and blood flowed. Once he once he's done that, he will give the decanter to the deacon and he will give it to him upside down. There's no spiritual reason behind this. It's more of a practical. Actually, there's a bit of a spiritual and practical in it. Much like, much like you and I, we fast before praying the liturgy. All the, all the vessels and all the utensils, if you'd like, of the altar have to fast. So an altar has to have fasted um, prior to the conducting of a liturgy. So is everything that Abuna uses, including the, the decanter that's used for, for, the, uh, for the wine uh, and, 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 um, and water in that case. So I, the reason Abuna turns it upside down is really so that the deacon can take it, have it remain upside down so that the water completely drains and it truly fasts, if you'd like, before, uh, before the next liturgy. After Abuna finishes the prayer of the, um, of the offering, this is now what we call the burial of the lamb. So the very large veil um, that is on top of uh, the altar, so a deacon will pass, either a deacon or, um, or, or Abuna, or another Abuna rather, they will, after the Thanksgiving prayer, Abuna will cover the bread, he'll cover the veil, he'll cover with the bread with one veil, he'll cover the chalice with another veil, and then this large covering that you see, it's called the prosferin, which means offering. Either Abuna, uh, either a deacon or another uh, Abuna serving with the serving priest will pass the prosferin over from the western, from the, sorry, from the east side to the west side. So they'll pass it over and they will cover the entire uh, altar. And there's symbolism behind that too. And then Abuna will take the last veil. He'll um, almost fold it in half if you'd like. And then he will put that veil on top of the prosperin. So almost like a small triangle, if you see it in the picture there. He'll take it and he'll put it on top of the prosperin. This whole um, uh, sequence of events is referred to as the burial of the lamb. And there is tremendous symbolism behind every movement that happens in every, uh, every veil uh, that is, that is in the location of why it's placed. Let's go through them one by one. The altar, the altar symbolizes the tomb. Okay? That is where Christ was buried. And that is the altar represents or symbolizes the tomb. Therefore, if the altar represents the tomb, the paten or the plate represents what? Any, any guesses? So if the altar is the tomb, the paten, is what we call the beer. The beer is um, it's it's the surface or the platform of which where the body of Christ lay. Okay, it was it, that's the surface or the or the um, the bed, if you'd like, of where Christ laid. Um, so that is that's what typically was in in, um, in Jewish times in burials. That's what it was. So the altar is the tomb, the paten. The plate where the bread sits on is the beer. So if the paten is the beer, remember there's between the orbana uh, or the lamb and between the paten, there's a veil in between them. The veil under the bread, therefore, is the burial cloth. It represents the burial cloth. cloth. A circular veil that's put in there represents the burial cloth. And then the veil that's on top of the bread and the chalice, remember when Abuna finishes, he finished, he put a veil on top of the, uh, the bread, he put a veil on top of the wine. Those two veils together represent the shrouding on the face of the Lord. Okay, so if you remember Christ, when he was buried, they wrapped him, uh, they wrapped him in, 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 in the burial cloths, and then there was an, a separate cloth for his face, that's the shrouding of the face of, of Christ. 
And then the dome, um, and the, the key word here is the four hands. So the, the four hands of the dome represent the hands of Joseph and Nicodemus who carried the body of Christ. Okay. And then the brosferin, the large covering, if the, if the altar is the tomb, then the large covering would be the stone that was rolled in front of the alt in front of the tomb. And therefore, the small veil that Abuna folded and put on top of the large veil, on top of the brosferin, becomes the seal that the, the guards had sealed the tomb with. And then lastly, <clears throat> the priest and the deacon facing him. So like I said, when Abuna is finished, there's a deacon on the other side who passes to him the brosferin, or another priest who passes for him the brosferin. Those two deacons... Uh, sorry, those two individuals, whether it's a deacon or a guna or two agunas, those represent the two angels which Mary Magdalene had seen inside the tomb. Okay, and if you recall, in the um, in the events of the resurrection, yes, there was um, there was the apparition of the angel outside of the tomb. But in, in the same, and if you read on the accounts, inside the tomb, there was two angels, one at the head, one at the foot. And that represents that the, the, the location of the priest and the deacon that is a reminder of, of those two angels who appeared in the tomb. Okay? So tremendous symbolism uh, and richness in, in, in this specific ritual um, when, when it's conducted. And I'll go out on a limb and say that, you know, many, many people sometimes they, you know, they miss this complete, they, they miss attending this part of the liturgy completely. Um, and it's a shame really, because this really sets your mindset and sets your, uh, sets your thought process as you're now entering, as you're going to go in, you know, now in deep into the liturgy and deep into the word of God. Um, uh, so, so this truly is a is a very rich moment within the liturgy, and, and unfortunately, a lot of people a lot of people don't attend it. Um, and 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 I would encourage you to to you know if 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 you can attend that early, it's it's it's, it's like I said, rich. Hmm? Now we have to now you have to attend it. Yeah. After the burial of the lamb, then Abuna <clears throat> he will kneel before the altar, and he kissed the altar. He will kneel. Um, he will also kneel kneel before. Um, before the altar and then before the, uh, before, like towards the east, um, he will offer a matanya to the other priests that are in attendance um, and the deacons, um, asking them to pray for him as well. And then he will, uh, after the exchange of the holy kiss, um, they will, he will leave the sanctuary. They will all leave the sanctuary and he will pray the absolution. And this is yet another, um, reason why I think it's important to attend the liturgy early. The, the prayer of this absolution, Abuna's praying this absolution, asking for God to accept the sacrifices that we're offering and, and to make us worthy of those sacrifices and to make us worthy to attend um, and, to, and to miss the absolution. It, 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 like you, you think about, well, why is Abuna praying then if I'm not there? Who is he praying for if I'm not there? So I think it's incur it, we, we should encourage ourselves to at least make sure that we're attending the absolution. Um, even as deacons, we, we try to encourage deacons to attend before the absolution is prayed because it's called the absolution of the servants. That, by that, it ends, uh, that, that ends the procession of the Lamb. Um, over the next 15 minutes or so, because I know, I know, our, you know, so I'm, I'm going to go through what we call the liturgy of the catechumens or the liturgy of the word. Um, the, if you recall, I said that starting from the creed, it's the liturgy of the faithful, um, which means if, if the word catechumens are people who are still, who are non-believers, okay? Um, in, the, in the church, in the tradition of the church, and even until today, when someone was converting or someone was preparing to convert into Christianity and was still learning about the faith, um, they would allow, the church would allow that individual to come and attend um, the liturgy of the catechumens because 
through the liturgy of the catechumens, there's the word of God that's being read. And so this was meant as, okay, we're, edu we're also educating those who are new to the, to the, um, uh, to the faith and they'll come and attend, um, they'll come and attend up to uh, reading of the gospel. Once that's done, the catechumens were asked to leave. Um, they were asked to leave the church and then those who were of the faith can then recite the creed. The catechumens would not be able to recite the creed because they are not of the faith yet. So um, that's why it's, either, it's called the liturgy of the catechumens or liturgy of the word. Uh, within the liturgy of the word, um, there are of course the readings that you're all aware of, the Pauline, um, the Catholic epistle, the praxis, the synexarium, and the gospel. So we start with the, the Pauline. Now during the Pauline, there's the, um, there's the, the um, what we call the Pauline circuit. So everyone is gonna go start going around the, the church. Before he does that, so the, 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 um, the deacon will bring him the censer. And this is, by the way, this happens during raising of incense, like Becker and Vespers and Matins and, and Vespers. And it also happens, the same thing happens in the Pauline. So uh, the deacon will bring the censer to, to Abuna and Abuna will put five spoonfuls of incense. And those five, five spoonfuls of incense represent the sacrifices of five of the Old Testament priests. The sacrifice of Abel, Noah, Melchizedek, Aaron, and Zacharias. Sorry, I'm just gonna bring my book here because I'd, like I'd, like um, I'd like to read this as, as we go along. So he will he will put the he will put five spoonfuls of incense to represent those sacrifices, um, and obviously there are no more no more sacrifices uh, like there's no longer blood sacrifices but fruit of the land which the Lord purified through his incarnation and burial. So those incense, so the incense is, is is part of that, and then facing the east he raises the incense three times. So. When, when he's raising the incense, he's, he's, he's raising it three times and then he swings. Um, and, and that represents, uh, that represents the Holy Trinity in one, one essence. So he will swing three times and uh, swing, the, swing the censer once. And that represents the Trinity. Um, now, there, he goes around the altar or there are three circuits of ins around the altar, and we'll go through that in, in a little bit more detail. Abuna will start facing the east. So if you imagine like the top of your screen um, is the east, okay? He will start by praying what we call the litany of, of um, the litany of peace. So he starts off like this. I'm gonna read from I'm gonna read from the um from the Kholegi, from the liturgy book. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll click as I'm reading so that you can see the progress. So he goes like this. O God who received to yourself the offerings of the righteous Abel, the sacrifice of Noah and Abraham and the instance of Aaron and Zacharias. Um, he will keep going and a couple of more prayers. I'll jump a little bit and he said, he'll say, we ask you, O Master, remember, O Lord, the peace of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. During this time, on the other side, there's a deacon who's facing him. Um, the deacon is supposed to answer him. So this is a litany, and the deacon is supposed to answer him and say, pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic and apostolic Orthodox Church of God. During this time, we don't do any answering, though, because outside the deacons are chanting. Um, and most likely what, what, what had happened here historically, because of time, um, the church had basically... Um, had this process done inaudibly so that the deacons outside can chant because the liturgies were much longer back back in the old days so this was this 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 activity if you'd like was done in parallel um, to save time but in fact until today even in the liturgy books you will see that the deacon is supposed to answer him so as abuna is praying the litany of peace the deacon is answering saying pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church uh, of God. And then Abuna will turn, they, they will start moving towards, he'll start moving towards the other side. And he says, this which exists from one end of the world to the other. Remember, O Lord, our honor, patriarch, our father, the high, peace, the high priest. And he prays for the, for the Pope and the bishop. 
So he's now standing on the other side of the altar and uh, the deacon is down on the other side, as you can imagine. And as he prays this litany, the deacon will also answer him and say, pray, pray for our high priest, Pope Ava Tawadros, and, and, and any, any, whoever the bishop or the metropolitan is. And then Abuna will continue and keep, and you say, keep him or protect him uh, for us many years and peaceful times. And then by the time he gets to the other side, he'll say, remember, O Lord, our assemblies or our meetings, bless them. And the deacon on the other side will say, pray for this holy church and our assemblies. After this point, the deacon doesn't answer anything. After this, it's up to Abuna. He will continue and say, make it, uh, make it for us without hindrance that we may hold them according to, our holy, to your holy and blessed will. Houses of prayer, houses of purity, houses of blessing, grant them to us, O Lord, um, and to your servants who will come after us forever. Arise, O Lord, let all your enemies be scattered and let all who hate your holy name flee from before your face. As for your people, in blessing thousand of thousand and ten thousand of ten thousand, doing your will through the grace and compassion and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. So in all of this, Abuna is actually praying. He's praying for the peace. He's praying for the fathers. He's praying for our meetings and our assembly. He's praying for our houses. Um, he's praying for... The, 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 the people of God to be blessed a thousandfold. So this is all being done for us, a prayer offering for us. And that's, that's always the teaching of the church and even the teachings um, uh, of, of, of the apostles to pray for one another. And, and in fact, the, the, the church teaches this through its own liturgical, through the, through the liturgical services to pray for one another. So Abuna here is offering prayers for, um, uh, for us and for, for all the servants um, of his church, and then he will step out, uh, out of the sanctuary. Once he's done that circuit, and if you've counted, it's three times now. Okay, so he's gone around the altar three times, and then he'll step out of the sanctuary, um, and then he will offer incense. Um, he will offer incense towards the east in his spot so in front of the uh, in front of the sanctuary he will offer towards the east then towards the west uh, and, uh, offering incense to to the angels to the south to towards the icon of saint john the baptist or if you like towards the baptistry uh, sorry or towards not the baptistry sorry the host of angels to the to the, to, sorry to the south which is the icon and then um, and then he will also come and bless the or instance towards the gospel and if there is a bishop uh, present or a metropolitan he will offer that as well and then abuna will start going around the around the church um he he goes around the church if you imagine looking looking towards the east he goes from the left side to the right side and he kind of does it almost like an eight okay so if you imagine he's coming he's he's coming down uh he's gone down the men's side or the left side of the church and he comes around and he goes up and then he comes back from the other side of the right side and then he comes back up again um and he's he's done this big circle and he's gone from left to right so the the whole left to right symbolizes um moving from darkness to light and journeys of, of, the, of, the, of the three journeys that St. Paul um, had, had, had done as he preached the gospel and as he preached the word of God. So he's gone all over the world to preach, to preach the word of Christ, uh, to preach the word of God, and Abuna, in doing so, he's doing this to remind us of, um, of the spread of the word of God through, uh, through St. Paul and through his epistles. After he's done this big round around the church, he'll come back again in front of the sanctuary. He'll enter the sanctuary. He'll place one more spoonful um, to, um, of, of incense. And he'll circle the altar again once. 
Um, and I'll just read for you as well when he goes back in. I can't find it right now and I can I can I can try to find it after just for the sake of time because I got two more slides but when he comes back and he puts that spoonful of incense it is it is a prayer for the sacrifices um, and it is a prayer for the sacrifices and he'll go around the altar uh, one last time that all happens before the Pauline is read and obviously during this time uh, the, the deacons are chanting the, the hymn of the censer. Um, the censer is in Abuna's hand and the censer reminds us of the symbol symbolism of Saint Mary and the intercessions um, of the saints at this time as well. Now after the praxis is read, sorry after the Pauline is read, the Catholic epistle is, is read but Abuna does not leave the sanctuary during the reading of the Catholic epistle. In fact, there is no, there's no, um, there's no movement at all. And the reason behind that is that it's a reminder of Christ's instructions not to depart Jerusalem until the coming of the Holy Spirit. So during, you know, between Ascension and Pentecost, when he told them, do not leave Jerusalem until the coming of the Holy Spirit. So Abuna staying inside the sanctuary, um, is 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 a reminder of that event. However, during this time, he also he is also saying a prayer, and that prayer is is for us on our behalf that the, that he grants us a clear mind and understanding of the words that we are listening to. And then there's the praxis circuit. In the praxis circuit, he will again the deacon will bring back the the incense, uh, the, sorry the censer, and he'll put one spoonful. And that spoonful is a is a symbol of the sacrifice of Abraham. Um, and in that Isaac was an archetype of the sacrifice of the Lord. So this time he'll put one spoonful. In the beginning he had five. This time he'll put one representing or symbolizing uh, the sacrifice of Abraham and Isaac being the archetype. And then he will repeat the exact same thing around the altar uh, as we did in the, uh, in the Pauline. Um, he'll go around three times. Same, same idea. Um, but this time when he leaves the sanctuary, so if you recall, when Abuna came out in pa the Pauline, he went all over the church. Uh, and he went from left to right. In this instance, he does not go around the church, but rather he just stays in the front. Um, and the reason he does that is because it, unlike St. Paul, um, who went all over the world, as it was known back then, the, the rest of the apostles, they were limited, they limited their preaching to Judea and the surrounding area. So Abuna doesn't go all over the church, he just stays up in the front. And once he's done, he doesn't enter the sanctuary. And the reason he doesn't enter the sanctuary is because most of these apostles never returned to Jerusalem. Um, they were martyred. So they never, they, they never returned. So that, again, is a reminder of the work of the apostles um, in the church in, 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 in preaching the word of God. After that, then, is the, the litany of the gospel, the synexarium and the litany of the gospel, and then the gospel is read. I know we're at 10 o'clock, so I think that just brings me to the end of part one. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to conclude it here, um, and, then, and then next week, God willing, we can... Uh, we can so I hope, I hope this was a good overview. Um, I would tell you that there's much, much more um, to the liturgy, but I've, I've tried to keep it as high level um, and within the time, time limits. And, and with that, I'll, I'll pass it back to uh, Abuna for questions or, or Aki for, uh, for any additional commentary, I suppose. I'm gonna go on this camera because there's feedback on the other camera if I turn it on. Uh, so if anyone has any questions or, or comments or... Uh, um, yeah, questions or comments, uh, please put them. Please put them in the in the chat room. Um, thanks for joining us, Tamer.
any place that we can. Thanks for joining us, Tamir. <laughs> the same here, so. Any, and uh, thank you, Ragi, thank you very much. Any, uh, any thoughts, any feedback, anyone, any questions? Um, I'll say that there's, I think like 90% of the stuff that Ragi said, I have no idea though. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's, that's a general statement, 90% of what I say, he has no idea, just, just support you. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I knew there was always symbolism. I just never knew that there was, um, sorry, I knew there was symbolism. I just didn't know what the symbolism was. So the altar and this lefefa and this lefefa and why it's, you know, uh, folded this way and why it's put this way and why we go to the right versus the left, all that stuff. Um, didn't know the, the, the nitty gritty details of it. Micheline is saying, I'm very impressed that you still have a presentation from 10 years ago. You yeah. must be very organized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you should ask my wife, Irini. Some, you know, sometimes I'm not that organized, but there are things I'm more organized, better organized at. Than others. I would like to actually say something if you guys are ever interested. So one of the, one of the really good sources that I've used um, is this book uh, by His Grace Bishop Mateos. And actually, this book is really, really special for me because he's, uh, when he was here in Canada several uh, several years ago, he had also personally signed it for me. So um, I, I, I guard this, uh, I, I, I value it very much. But the book is titled uh, The Spirituality of the Rites of the Holy Liturgy in the Coptic Orthodox Church. Um, so it's a really, it's a, it's a really, um, it's an easy read, very easy read. Um, there's so much, uh, so much details in here and a lot of the material that I've prepared. There's another book as well, um, which I have upstairs, which I, I can, I can uh, also offer uh, to everyone next week. Uh, but <clears throat> I'm not sure if this book is still sold. I mean, I know it was around <clears throat> uh, seven years, years ten, 10 plus years ago, but I'm sure it's still around. It's probably even, I would imagine it's even on the internet, maybe in PDF form. Um, Maybe I I don't know, but um, if if you're ever interested, I mean that's that's one book that I would recommend. <coughs> this must be a treasure, uh, uh, Ragi. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. the Mitaos Yani signed it uh, with the information in it that and 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 his uh, his th this is one of his speciality actually, like the uh, rights of the church and the spirituality of it, and this is something really very nice and very important is to. Uh, understand the meaning, the spiritual meaning behind it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put myself on camera, but don't, don't be shocked. I played a little bit with it, so I hope this is a nice. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me about about that I could do a background. I said, let me give this a try. You just, you just found out now, 13 weeks into the pandemic. No, no, no. Someone told me, but I've never, I've never used it. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to finish Zoom in the next couple of weeks. We're done with Zoom. Yeah, yes. We're yeah. about to real life. Yeah, so, 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 so really going into the, the depth of the spirituality and, and this helps to feel the real presence of Christ in the liturgy because the, the ultimate thing about the, uh, the ultimate benefit and the value is the real presence uh, in the sacrament, in their prayers, and then ultimately, of course, to be in the, in the communion when we are united with him. So feeling his real presence in all the steps from the beginning until the end is a wonderful experience so that we could really uh, uh, enjoy the, the, the liturgy. The liturgy is Christ. So unless we meet with Christ in the liturgy and find the meaning behind every action where we can see Christ, where we can see uh, 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 all the symbolism, all the, 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 the enactment and the movement, they symbolize something. They mean something uh, uh, that trigger the presence of Christ. So this is really amazing. Thank you, Ragi.
Thank you. Bueno, Was there anything you didn't know that Raghi presented? I do. Uh, everything I didn't know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did he, he? Maybe this is a side story, uh, Iragi. One time, your brother attended with me. Uh, I, I think a liturgy during the fast of Jonah or the or Lent. Lent. I think it was Lent. And he it was had Lent. Lent. It was before. It was before. It was like one, two weeks or three weeks before COVID. Before COVID yes, weekday. So, so, so he said, oh, "What's happening? What are you doing? You're doing a lot of stuff that I haven't <laughs> seen in the liturgy." <laughs> Matanya Klinomenta Gonata and the liturgies. <laughs> yeah, it was my first time attending a, a liturgy during Lent, during the weekday. I've never attended a week. I've attended yeah. liturgies. I've never attended a liturgy during weekdays, during Lent. And I walked in and was like, how has Bescha started? We just started fasting like a week ago. <laughs> Um, it's the twilight zone. Yeah, it was completely, completely irrelevant. Well, yeah, the, the liturgy. I think that's not, that's that's actually that's a really good point. The the the, the liturgy. Um, as Abuna said, because there's meaning behind it, so even there are, during special occasions, um, you know, there are specific uh, rituals or specific rites that are uh, that are specific to the timing and the event, and they they all have meaning. Uh, they all have meaning. So you know, the prayer of the Psalms, for example, that's 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 one that's one reason. For example, you know, liturgies in, in during the Lent they're much they're much further during the day, so the more more Psalms are read. Um, in the when when we'll talk about this in the liturgy of the faithful next week, you know, the shortest liturgy in the whole year. Does anyone know what the shortest liturgy of the whole year is? Um, yeah, um, um, the one you uh, don't attend. You no, know, no, no, no. Yeah, um, uh, Covenant Thursday, <laughs> right? Covenant Thursday. So Covenant Thursday, there, there's a whole whack of things that are skipped in the liturgy. The whole beginning is in fact completely missed and skipped. And that that beginning, and when we, when we go through it next week, and that's called the prayer of reconciliation. There is no reconciliation because the crucifixion um, hasn't happened yet, and there's there's no you know there, there's no uh, reconciliation between the earthly and the heavenly, and so that part is skipped. Not because we don't want to reconcile or we hate each other all of a sudden, but it's 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 a reminder of the events of the church. So the liturgy is truly a living. Um, it's a it's a it's a living sacrament, and uh, the Eucharist is a living sacrament, and the liturgy is reminding us um, and keeping us in tune of the events um, that are happening, so that we're truly living them uh, as well. <coughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Raghi. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hope this was a good uh, reminder, refresher, or uh, education for uh, those who did not understand, like like. like know the meanings and maybe this is an invitation to really pay attention to the meaning because it makes a big difference uh, now knowing the meaning to relive it during the liturgy so i know a few people have the liturgy uh, booked to uh, to attend so now this is a treasure attending a liturgy is a treasure right now so treasure it and enjoy it with the presence of christ thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no announcements from my end but uh i'm going to do anything anything about back to church yeah. we are we are it's it's in the it's in the works uh, no specifics yet so we're gonna we, we are working on preparing to go back as soon as possible but i don't want to make any promises that we cannot that we cannot keep but uh, we started uh, we, we started as, as as servants kind of brainstorming thinking what are the steps needed and we're having more frequent meeting coming week to prepare how can we start as soon as possible, shift edge back to church in a safe way, of course, where we can enjoy uh, 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 seeing one another face to face and gathering around Christ. So as soon as we have more clear details, we're going we're gonna to announce it, but nothing, nothing uh, clear yet. Perfect. So hopefully we'll see, uh, hopefully we'll see people in real life and not, uh, not on Zoom anymore. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this personally. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. <laughs> with, with masks. Though. With masks. Yeah, with masks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shift back to the iPad. All right.
name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, all sins which we commit against you this day, whether in deeds or in words or in thoughts or through all senses, please remit and forgive us for the sake of your holy name, as you are a good a lover of mankind. God grant us a peaceful night and sleep free from all anxiety, and send us an angel of peace to protect us from every evil and every affliction and every temptation of the enemy, through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom is due with you and the Holy Spirit, the life giver who is one essence with you, all glory, honor, and dominion, now and forever, and to the ages, all ages. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, and have mercy on us at all times and every hour, and heaven and earth is worshipped and glorified. Christ, our God, the good, the long-suffering, the abundant in mercy, and the great in compassion, who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners, among whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of a sinner, but rather that returns and lives, who calls all to salvation for the promise of good things to come. Lord, receive from us the prayer in this hour and every hour. Ease our life and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thoughts, purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive us our sins, deliver us from every evil grief and distress of heart. Surround us by your holy angels that by their camp we may be guarded and guided to attain a unit of faith and a knowledge of imperceptible infinite glory for your blessed forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all your blessing. We thank you for uh, the safety that you provide for all of us, uh, despite what's happening. We ask you to keep everyone safe, uh, especially those who are going, uh, who are helping others, treating others, uh, anyone who are exposed on a daily basis uh, to risk. You are present. You are the uh, one who keep us safe and you are the one who has given us all abilities to protect others to help others and to help others recover and keep one another safe i pray for all of my brethren and sisters who are gathered right now that you would uh, continue to bestow upon us your peace your grace uh, your holy spirit uh, and thank you for all the reminders that we have received today that you are present with us uh, that you help us that you have uh, throughout all the ages uh, through the apostles through the tradition through the different rituals that you provided us with means where we can enjoy uh, uh, more intimately your presence and be united with you uh, we pray this through the prayers of all the quite heavenly hosts of the intercessions of the holy theotokos and mary and all the saints hear us as we pray our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one in Christ Jesus our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Now may the love of God, the Father, grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, come in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, stays with you, may leave in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with you, Abuna. Thank, Thank you, you Abuna. Yes, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Tamer, Marina, Madonna, and everyone who's still with us. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.